This section is on audio editing, and to get started with audio editing, we need to go over the snap settings. And I did cover these briefly when we talked about the toolbar, but now let's take a look at what we have in the snap settings right up here. Really, the quantize setting you see here and the snap settings here work together along with this button. Now, the keyboard shortcut for snap on and off, you can see right here is the N on the keyboard. So that turns us on and off. You can tell if it's engaged or not with this little blue button. And most of the time you can leave Snap set to adaptive if you're using Snap. There's also an override for Snap when Snap is on. So if we have Snap on, let's just set it to quarter notes. This quantize setting sets the grid. With Snap on adaptive, it will roughly snap to every quarter note. But snap is magnetic snapping in Studio One. So depending on the zoom level, you'll be able to position your event between the snap increment set here in Quantize. You'll see if I pull it back here, after it gets away from the actual division, you can position it freely for a while, then it will snap back to the division. You can also override snap by holding down Shift, and that allows you to move freely as if snap weren't on. Now let's go over the snap options and modifiers. Now the top part of the snap settings shows the adaptive bar quantize and frames modes. Most of the time you can leave this set to adaptive snap. That is the standard snap setting. Now if you set it to bar, it will override what you have set in quantize. Quantize sets the grid increment. So if you have it say set to eights, but you want to temporarily move things around by full measures, and you can just set the snap mode to bar temporarily, do the changes, and then set it back to adaptive. You don't have to mess with the quantize setting. The quantize option here works almost just like adaptive. For practical purposes, it's the same thing. So I really won't go into that now. And frames allows you to snap to frames if you're trying to synchronize things with film. Now, in addition to the four snap modes, adaptive, bar, quantize, and frames, we have some new behaviors that have been added in version 2. Now, snap to grid is the standard setup, but these additional behaviors allow us to snap to the cursor in the loop, snap to other events in the arrange view. We still have snap to grid, and as a modifier to that, we can have a relative grid. So things don't have to snap perfectly to the grid, but to where they were in reference to where they started when you move them. I'll demonstrate all of these. Now, to really see these first two, we need to turn snap to grid off. So with snap to grid off and snap on, we basically turn the snapping behaviors all off. Snap to cursor and loop will allow you to actually position something next to the cursor. So now I can freely position here the cursor somewhere. And now if I move, you can see the cursor itself becomes magnetic. So I can snap up against the cursor. And this helps with alignment in many different situations. So in addition to snapping to the cursor, it will also snap to the loop. So wherever you have the loop positioned here, it will also create magnetic points for snapping. So this is the beginning of the loop or the loop endpoint. If I just grab this and drag it, you can see now I've got snapping to that or I have snapping to the end. It's helpful when you don't actually have a grid set up and you're using the loop for reference. Also snap to other events. So I'm going to turn that on and turn off the snapping to the cursor in the loop just to make things clear. I'm just going to bring in another part here. So I'm just going to go to the track list and bring in a vocal part that's got a few different placements of things. Close the track list. Now with this snap set like this, snap to events, I have a couple different things I can do with this. One, it helps to align events end to end. So as I get an event close to another event, it will snap. This is really helpful when you do voiceover work, which I do a lot. If you cut out a piece or something like that, or you're just shuffling around maybe some sentences, you can quickly arrange them end to end and they'll snap together, even if you're not working against a grid. Now the other thing you can do is this works track to track. This is really a powerful feature once you get used to what you can do with it. If I grab something here, you'll see that I can align it to this event here. So it will align to any of the event starts and it will start to snap in. So if I want to align this event with this or this to the end of this other event, I can use that feature to do that. Let me just undo that to get back to where I was. And then let's take a look at the relative grid. So I'm going to turn this snap to events off and then we'll 
turn on snap to relative grid and you'll see that automatically turns on snap to grid because these things work together. You need snap to grid and relative grid on at the same time for this to work. Now if we look at this event here called Sarah, you'll see that the vocal starts ahead of the downbeat. So we wouldn't really want to line this to the measure. I'm going to set the quantize here to bars. And so normally if we're arranging by bars, everything's going to snap to the actual bar line. But with relative grid, I can leave arranging by bars turned on, but even if this is preceding the bar, as I move it, it will still line up with this point as the snap reference. Let me just show you how that works. So if I open this up a little bit and move this, you'll see the snapping is occurring right here. So it's moving relative to the original positioning as you move it. Same thing with this one here. You'll see it moves relative. This is a really useful feature that is a welcome addition to Studio One version 2. The snap to relative grid behavior is particularly useful when you're positioning vocal phrases. Many, many times vocal phrases are not cleanly cut at the bar line. So if you want the standard setup for music production, leave this set to adaptive for the mode and then the modifier to snap to grid and it will behave in the most predictable way. Then you have these other behaviors that you can enable or disable depending on the nature of the editing that you're doing. So now you should have a much better understanding of the snap modes and the additional snap behaviors. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.